Welcome everyone to Phazon Labs, powered by World 1-1 and sponsored by Phazon Flakes, a radioactively delicious part of this mutagenically balanced breakfast. I am, as always, your host, Larry the Bearded Wonder. Joining me this week is my co-pilot, Isabel Pramon. Hello. And Phazon Labs is our weekly fan uh, fan fiction-ish elevator pitch uh, fan game extravaganza for all things Metroid because we conceived this before Dread was announced and we thought we were never getting another Metroid game again. So we thought this would be fun. Mm -hmm. And then Dread came along and then we still thought this would be fun anyway. So fuck it. Mm -hmm. So this week uh, I've got one that I've been sitting on for a while. The, this, uh, this one kind of came to me almost a year ago. So it's, I, I've been sitting on this for a, a good long minute and, uh, it's, it's finally time to pull the curtain back and share my insanity with all of you. Go on. So this, so this week we bring together two stunning icons of the genre. I'm bringing together Samus and Ori. Yeah, we're going there. Mm -hmm. I'm making weird gesticulations with my hands that nobody can see because this is all audio. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So, concept, idea runs like this. Samus is on the run from the Federation. We're, we're picking up after Fusion here. Um, picks up a telepathic signal from uh, the, the planet that the Ori games take place on, which they don't really name per se. Uh, I mean, we, we get the name of like the Nibble Forest, uh, but we never get the planet name. So for all intents and purposes, I'm referring to the planet itself as Nibble because I don't have anything better to go on at this point. So, gets telepathic signal from Nibble. She goes there, and we find out that the spirit tree on Nibble is actually the ghost of a Chozo. That's what's inhabiting the spirit tree. That's the big voice that's been talking. Mm-hmm. So, she goes there, finds out that the Chozo have actually been there eons ago and accidentally brought the ex-parasites with them. So as a result, to deal with this, you know, we went through the same shtick and made Metroids to wipe out the ex-parasite, except this time they managed to actually wipe out the Metroids after they had cleaned up all the ex-parasite. So we don't have shitloads of these little bastards running loose everywhere. Mm Mm-hmm. However, they kept one in cryogenic stasis right at the core of the planet. It's it's the emergency fallback. God forbid something goes horribly wrong. They've got it, just in case. So you start with your your fully powered uh, fusion suit from the end of fusion. You, You are max juiced, just like you were when you left the BSL and you went on the run. Except, here's the problem. On such a a no-tech planet in setting, a lot of her powers aren't worth a whole ton. Because there's not... There's just no mechanical computer digital interface for a lot of those things to interact with. So, as you dig deeper, you start finding more old Chozo genetic research that you pick up that begin to give you more organic Metroid-based powers that feed into that Metroid DNA that's infused in her from the vaccine. And as a result, those powers start stripping away other of her tech-based powers. So we're starting to swap out and dropping one ability for another while also going more organic based than instead of technology based Mm -hmm. so from there we eventually get to the core of the planet 
and find out that that telepathic signal that Samus, you know, was picking up and received was actually broadcasting from the queen that they had kept frozen at the planet core. But that cryogenic freeze containment was failing and the queen was telepathically reaching out for other Metroids and you picked up on it because you're part Metroid now from Fusion. Hmm. So at that point, yeah. See, I, I like the story idea in this. And mm-hmm. I, I don't have a huge idea going for gameplay here, but, you know, I, I do like that at no point are you inherently stripped of your, like, abilities at the beginning. You're mm-hmm. voluntarily giving one up for another that's going to be actually beneficial to you in this setting for one that, you know, wasn't beneficial here because of the setting. Mm-hmm. I think it's. I think it would be a really neat opportunity too, for the franchise to play with really reaching out into new territory for abilities, powers, uh, both combat and traversal based. Mm-hmm. Because at this point, you know, we're feeding more into that Metroid organic centered focus for those abilities and upgrades mm-hmm. so like I want to see a life drain ability mm-hmm. I feel like it should be like close quarters combat where you get up on somebody and she latches on somehow and drains the life out of it and restores some of her health in the process too mm-hmm. instead of you know just blowing something up you get like that little grade husk that if you touch it it disintegrates kind of shit I want mm-hmm. that so, come the end of this, you know, we finally get down, and the queen recognizes Samus essentially as one of her own that she's called out to, because again, you know, we're picking up on that matching genetic material. And Samus takes that uh, that opportunity of vulnerability to essentially pull the plug on her, reboot the uh, the cryogenic f- containment system that's been holding her there, and then super juice it so that frozen solid that that cold puts the hurt on that Queen Metroid, mm-hmm. and then just detonates it, shattered, frozen shards of queen everywhere takes the whole thing out saves the planet Hmm. now here's a couple of other fun tidbits I'm throwing in here because it's never been said officially where they came from in my head canon I firmly believe that the Itakuns and the Dechora originally came from this planet it makes sense. They 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 would not look out of place with any other creature there, honestly. Mm-hmm. So, I, I think it'd be cool to you know be able to come across some Itakuns and Dechora in their natural habitat here. Little spoiler tidbit. It's not. Ori that's running around with Samus, or at least, you know, kind of crossing paths a few places to help here and there. But instead, it is the new Ori descendant from the end of Will of the Wisps. Hmm. You're not there yet, so I won't go too deep into that, but for anybody okay. that's finished the second Ori, mm-hmm. you, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. So... That does not, however, negate the Chozo ghost being the original spirit in the tree in Blind Forest. That's still a thing. Those okay. are two separate. So, and eventually, when you, Isabel, when you get to finish it, this will you'll be like, oh, I know what he's doing here. I got that now. Mm-hmm. So, and then, just for shits and giggles, not that it's particularly related, but because it makes my head cannon extra happy. 
this is the same planet where Hollow Knight actually takes place. It's just, you know, somewhere or someone else on Nibble, because why the hell not? You know, just a bunch of bugs underground. They're just elsewhere living living their best bug life until the infection happened. But I feel mm-hmm. like that would not be out of place on this planet either. And one more that I'm wrapping up wrapping in here. Further down the line, as Samus, you know, brings peace to the planet and saves it and stops the queen from coming out and rampaging and destroying everything on Nibble. Eventually, Samus, you know, decades, decades down the line, finally eventually leaves Nibble, but her ship has kind of undergone some changes in the process, and it eventually becomes the ship from Insanely Twisted Shadow Planet, and Insanely Twisted Shadow Planet, the ship that you're playing as is actually Samus' inner gunship, which is also mutated over time because Samus is mutated into part Metroid. Hmm. So, this was just incredibly fun for me just to string together like almost a half dozen different games in the genre mm-hmm. and make them all cohesive in my head. Because mm-hmm. I'm insane and why the hell not? Mm-hmm. So, from there, here's my question What do you want to see out of this? What do you envision here? So, I was thinking, like, if, like, we would do a, a game with that was set on Nibble, um, I was thinking it would be interesting if we took elements from Ori, because I haven't played Hollow Knight yet, so I'm not sure exactly what that what's in there that would, that would be applied to Metroid. Um, but if we could take elements from Ori and like apply it to Metroid because one of the things that I really like about Ori um, is they have like the skill tree and they have like the soul links which I think are really interesting like Mm -hmm. the skill tree I thought I didn't like wouldn't like but there's like an element of strategy to it and I think it would be really interesting to play around with that in like a Metroid game where you would actually where you would upgrade your elements, but you only have like a certain number of, you know, like things that you can gather. So you can't like upgrade fully. Um, and then like the soul links, um, I think is a really interesting idea that you can make like a save point anywhere, which would, you know, make something like the Fantoon or the Yakuza nightmares for me and uh you know because you could just make a save point you know right outside their door you know if if we bring them back to this game uh which i wouldn't like but anyway um and then that issue of having to like go all the way back to a save state or whatever um would be solved so those are like two things that i would really like um, I also I'm thought about, yeah, I also thought about like an energy steel move, but then I also was thinking of a couple of other powers that could be uh, used for Samus. Um, one of them would be like a, like a light beam or like a flamethrower. I think it would be interesting to bring those back because those have only been used in like the prime games. I think it'd be really interesting to have them in like a, 2D game, if we assume that this is going to be a 2D game. Um, and then this one, I I, I laugh as I write this because I wrote this back in, um, like, June or whatever. I call this an Echo Dash, which is like a dash attack. Mm-hmm. And um, it looks like as though we're getting something similar in yeah. our upcoming game. <laughs> uh, so I something like that I think would be really interesting uh, in like an Ori game Ori Metroid uh, crossover like that um, that you would be able to dash around and do that and then the third one I had was a thorn bomb 
that you would have a bomb variant that sprays thorns around. Ooh, um, shrapnel. Yeah, yeah, like shrapnel ones. But yeah, so I was thinking more like gameplay that would bring the Ori games to Metroid. Um, but then I was thinking like if we don't have Ori in this game, because I actually was thinking it would be interesting if we could like switch between the two in mm -hmm. this game. Like you would be able to switch to Samus if you wanted to, you know, be able to do long range, uh, long range, you know, attacks, and then Ori, you could do like short range, uh, you know, attacks. I think because you can do that in uh, Will of the Wisps. I think you can do more combat. Yeah. So I think that would be interesting and could make for some uh, like interesting boss encounters that you know like you could only you know it would like one boss would be much easier if you attack you know like tackle it with one character and then you could challenge yourself by uh, tackling it with another character or something like that. So um, that's what I'm thinking in terms of like gameplay. Uh, the story I really like, uh, and, uh, I like the idea of have, of Samus having a connection with the Metroids, and would like that to be explored further, even, like, because if she has the Metroid DNA in her after fusion it would be interesting like does she feel any more like ethical qualms about you know having to fight them or that kind of thing because she's fighting herself basically i think that'd be an interesting thing to explore what are your thoughts on that i can't see her having any particular moral qualms with it now, on the other hand, what I do think could make for uh, an interesting kind of driving story component and an, op an opportunity to kind of inject some dialogue into it as well would be if Sign binds to her suit mm. and offers a, a sort of telepathic link between Samus and the Chozo ghost that's uh, embedded itself and become the great spirit tree in the Nibble Forest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be interesting. And then from there, the deeper sh the deeper you go as Samus and Ori together, or Ori 2.0 rather, um, there's dialogue back and forth between Samus and that spirit of that ghost in the tree about what the hell were you thinking keeping this thing here mm -hmm. yeah so no I do like that uh, cause I cause I do like the the dialogue that they have well I like how, how Ori in the Blind Forest like has like a combination of like narration and like really good silent storytelling like when naru died um uh yeah there was some tears shed so uh and that was all without dialogue pretty much so you know i think that'd be really interesting if they would be able to keep that balance that they did uh with ori so um but yeah, I I think that would be a, an interesting take on the Chozo, like feeling regret, kind of. Uh, even I think maybe I, I think what would be really fun to explore, and we might even see some of this in Dread too, is Samus expressing like disgust or you know accusations against the the Chozo spirit there on Nibble of you know being morally reprehensible for having uh kept that last one alive knowing full well and having seen what's happened before 
you know, mm-hmm. keeping that last one alive as a fallback. It's like, no, you don't do that shit. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. Kill it. Yeah. Yeah, that would be an interesting conversation, I think. Yeah. Uh, trying to think. Um, so, like, my, my, I keep thinking of, for some reason, the, the Queen Goma from Ocarina of Time, when I think of the Mm -hmm. Queen Metroid inside the spirit tree. Uh, and I'm wondering, like, cause in like Ori in the Blind Forest, there's like a, a corruption throughout the forest. Um, that's like causing all sorts of problems and I wonder would this be a similar situation that the Queen Metroid is causing kind of like this sort of corruption like the Queen Goma did and uh, whatever is going on in or in the blind forest uh, or would this be more just like a regular forest and you, you might have a touch of that where the the creatures of Nibble are telepathically sensitive and are being driven mad mm-hmm. by the, the queen's telepathic call. Mm-hmm. Mm. So. I do like that, I think. That would be an interesting... Because I almost feel like as though the queen might be like begging for help in mm-hmm. whatever way that might be. You know, whether it's help to set her free whatever mm-hmm. free means uh it's just trying to get loose to do what it does by nature yeah but just to try and reproduce and propagate the species yeah but or or if we go like an alternate route and we imagine that there's some sentience to it if it's telepathically communicating it could be asking for another form of release you know mm-hmm. so that that's another possibility. It's an idea so, to play with. Yeah, so that's a, that's something that is a possibility. Only because it would be interesting. Like maybe this, maybe this Queen Metroid and this Chozo Ghost are linked together as well. Mm-hmm. Like the like the Chozo sealed itself away to keep the Queen Metroid from escaping, and you know it's slowly trying to you know keep the queen from escaping but they're becoming more and more intertwined so you can't really tell what's the queen and what's the chozo ghost anymore uh that might be interesting take on the story actually so uh. so last uh one of the last pieces to look at here what, what do you uh, what do you hear in your head for music? Ooh, uh, I am imagining more Ori style music, but with some like touches of Metroid, if that makes sense. Oh, it um, does. Yeah, like I would love more leaning towards more Ori if it's set on Nibble but with like touches of you know like the of like the classic Metroid like synths and that kind of thing I think that would be a really interesting combination and I think with the right composer the right you know score writer that would be a really interesting soundtrack i think but i know nothing about music though so that's my that's my thoughts so now see i'm i'm close to you on this i'm i'm feeling maybe a 75 to 80 percent lean to the ori style soundtrack music mm-hmm. but with maybe about a 20 percent injection of the more alien disconcordant Mm -hmm. uh, side of Metroid's music. Mm -hmm. So that there are points where it feels kind of uh, stretched and distressed Mm -hmm. and kind of almost unpleasant. Mm -hmm. 
maybe the closer you get to the Queen Metroid, the more Metroid-like the music gets or something. That'd be interesting. Maybe even the deeper you go, you get a more uh, earthen sound mm. to the Ori music instead of the very sweeping, grand, and whimsical orchestral score. Mm -hmm. No, I like that idea. Yeah. Yeah. But, so... Last last part of this before we uh, you know put a bow on this episode for the week. Um, I have an idea in mind, but I'm curious what yours is. What do we name this bad boy? Oh, um, I'm wondering because it it feels weird to call it like Metroid blank. So I'm almost wondering if we should call it like Samus. And the uh, Samus and the Lost Child, or something like that. Uh, I'm not sure, only because the the if if we like consider that this Aura 2.0 is like you know lost in the forest again, like he is at the beginning of Or in the Blind Forest, that might be interesting. So I I almost kind of like want the naming convention of the uh the ori games instead of like the classic metroid blank if that makes sense it does so but he, here, here's what i got hear me mm -hmm. out and see how this sits with you because i'm about to run this up the flagpole and see if you salute metroid ancient spirits oh hmm I do like that. I feel like that has the right ring for this. Uh huh. I like the. I like the. Um, it it is very evocative, but it doesn't quite spell everything out. So I do mm. like that a lot. But I also still I think I'm leaning more towards Samus and the Lost Child <laughs> as my as mine. But I think we should go with. Metroid Ancient Spirits, uh, Samus and the Lost Child as its subtitle. So, <laughs> so I like that. I feel like Samus and the Lost Child is begging to make more baby jokes. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Maybe like uh, Samus and the uh, Samus and the oh, I had one and then I lost it. Um, no, I like Samus and the Lost Child. Nope, that's what I'm going with. So, I will die on that hill. So, <laughs> so, but no, I do like Metroid Ancient Spirits quite a lot, though. Yeah, I just like, I just think Samus and the Lost Child would be the perfect subtitle to that, then. So, but yeah. So, yeah, no, I think it's a, I think it would be a really interesting crossover with lots of great potential for, you know, ideas that could be implemented into Metroid and kind of vice versa too um, but yeah no I like this idea a lot so excellent yeah. idea so well in that case let's uh, let's close up shop here and hang up our uh, lab coats I uh, want to say thank you to everybody that tuned in this week thank you to my uh, co-pilot Isabel Bramman Thank you. And, and uh, we'll, we'll leave you with the the very important reminder. Make sure you buy Dread. And from there, we'll see you next mission. Have a good night, everybody. Good night. Peace.